What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and this is part 65 of my reviewing and ranking Frank Zappa's guitar solos within the context of the al of an album. Today's album is You Are What You Is. I will rate, rank the six guitar solos that are on here. Always think I'm missing something, but I think there's only six. Um, I will rank these according to my personal favorite. Then I will rank this album compared to the other 64 albums I've already done on this channel based on guitar solos only. I like this album. If I was ranking it based not on guitar solos only, it would be ranked a lot higher than it's going to end up being ranked. I don't think the guitar solos are are necessary on this album. Um, I think if you were to excise, take out, remove, just eliminate the guitar solos, um, I, I still think the album is a pretty fantastic album. It's a very vocal heavy album. Uh, a lot of just like three minute songs with a lot of lyrics um, but then there's a lot of transitions within the songs a lot of like suites in which you have three or four or five songs that make up like a side of music which is essentially like the suite frank would play all of them together back to back to back or there's a couple suites that you would play together uh back to back um and the guitar solos are pretty much just kind of there to service the song in a lot of ways um there is one song only one instrumental on the album that is derived from a guitar solo that essentially is a guitar solo, but then it's made into maybe not a, we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, but the other five are just kind of there. And I have the original CD release. I think they've fixed this since then, but on the original CD, when they originally released it back in the late eighties, uh, one of the guitar solos was removed completely in order for the CD to like segue and not like, fade out as the album does where the song's on the end of a side of an album so it fades out in this case it just like you eliminate the guitar solo so there's no fade out um but i'm going to review the guitar solo version of this so yeah six out songs i'll put the list on the screen when i'm done talking about them and then i'll put the list of the albums so number six conehead really short really squiggly, really just uh, 80, early 80s shredding, just, yeah, it, it's there in Conehead. It's not a long Conehead awesome thing like they did in like 77 where it was an instrumental. It was absolutely like really, really, really cool. This is just a really short service in the song, get it over with, but you got a guitar solo there, guitar solo. Conehead, number six. Uh, number five, any downers, really short, just kind of screaming the entire time. It's just a straight sort of Frank metal screaming attack. Again, another song in which in 75, when they were playing Any Downers, I love those. Those were like guitar heavy, just Frank shredding, just that simple two chord vamp. Dun, 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 dun. And that and Frank would just solo over it, but a lot mellower than it is on here. Um, this, you just get this really super short screaming attack. Um, I just think it's a little more interesting Conehead because Any Downers, I think, is a little more interesting of a song than Conehead. Uh, number four is Doreen. Uh, a pretty good solo on here that's pretty long, but it's buried or it's mixed in with or it's a part of the, the ending sort of lot of vocal layers of vocals. Ray White just going off vocally, all this sort of chaotic end of the song type stuff going and Frank is just shredding underneath it. Um, and it's pretty interesting shredding. It's actually a pretty good solo. Um, it's just, there are times where it almost seems like it's like literally you can't see or hear the solo because it's lost under Ray White's voice or all these overlay like multiple layers of vocals and all this other stuff that's going on. So it's almost just like, it's like you're watching like a race car, but you lose sight of it for a while because everything that's happening, oh, there it is. It's popped back up. There's the solo. Um, but it's still pretty interesting. Pretty good. Um, yeah. Um, not sure it's needed though. Like when I hear like the live Doreen's from like the early 80s and they don't have that solo and they just, it stops and they go into the next song. I'm like, yeah, Doreen's even good without the solo. So yeah, it's interesting because it's like what, the third song in the album? Third, fourth song? Teenage Win, Doreen's third song. Um, it almost seems like it's a it's 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 setting you up for expectations that aren't really delivered on the rest of the album because you don't really get other long solos like this other than one that comes like two songs later. So it's interesting. Um, and then you do get one later on, but I don't know. 
don't know, Doreen, uh, number four. Uh, number three, if only she would, uh, uh, the rhythm section on this, uh, the, it just absolutely amazing. It's like, this is like a full, what, minute and a half solo. It's like Frank, probably the most, other than the one that comes next. It just feels like the most legitimate solo. It works within the context of the song. The groove is fantastic. Um, it's just really good. And live, if only she would have, from 1980, are off the chain. They are ridiculous. They are fantastic. They are must-hear things. Um, we need some more live 80s stuff dropping so we can experience some some really good If Only She Would Is, which are, are fantastic. Um, this one's just kind of a minute and a half little, just really good, really good solo. Um, nice screaming licks. The rhythm section's good. Very tasty, early, early 80s Frank sound. Really good stuff. Uh, number two is the one that was taken off my CD release. I think it's since been put back. Uh, Dumb All Over. Um, I grew up, or I didn't grow up, but my first experience with this album was the CD version that I eventually found the vinyl and bought the vinyl. I was like, wait, there's a guitar solo at the end of Dumb All Over? Um, and I didn't think the guitar solo was needed on the CD because it segues directly into Heavenly, Heavenly, Heavenly Bank Account. It's next, right? And I, I was like, okay, you don't need the guitar solo. But then once I heard the guitar solo, I was like, oh yeah, you, you do kind of need it. It kind of works. It kind of, yeah, it, 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 it kind of, it provides, oddly enough, some breathing room on the second half of the album. It's it's pretty long. I don't know. It's maybe a minute and a half, two minutes, maybe about as long as if only she would. Uh, um, Frank took it off of the CD for continuity purposes so that songs could flow together. But I, I, I know I've read interviews where he said, I, I wasn't a fan of the solo anyways. I didn't like the solo anyways. But I think it's a pretty good solo. Um, it's a dumb all over. It's that dun dun dun, dun and he's soloing over that. You know your typical early '80s Frank sound. Um, and I think it, I think it, it provides some necessary breathing space away from so many vocals, um, on this album. Um, and it's a pretty good solo. It's not great or mind blowing, but I, I think it serves its purpose well. And then my number one solo, which I debated whether or not to actually count it as a solo, um, but the solo itself I actually really like. Um, is the theme from the third movement of Sinister Footwear. And this is a solo from uh, 77, 78, fall of one of those years. It's from the Persona Non Grata vamp, um, on which Frank would open shows and then play a solo. And so what Frank did for this one um, it is from 78, October 20th. I knew it was one of the Halloween runs. Yeah, not 77, 78. So Frank took the solo from that, which opened the show. And then he had Steve Vai, like double it, like transcribe it and then just play it. I think he had Ed Mann play it also. I think he had David Auker on either clarinet or bass clarinet play it. Like he had, like he like doubled and tripled like the actual solo and just layered it. So yeah, that's what it, bass clarinet and with a different rhythm track. So I don't think it's the, it's not the original rhythm track from 78. Um, it's not Kali Yuta on, uh, on drums. Um, it's Logaman and then Barrel still on bass. Um, and it doesn't really feel like a guitar solo because you have all these other instruments going over the top of it, so it feels like a written composition, but it's not. It's a guitar solo that was improvised in real time, and now Frank's turned it into this piece of music that sounds like a written composition by having these other players like learn it and double it and just... So it's a really, really interesting piece of music. And this more has to do with the album than it does with this song, but it's the fifth song out of 20, and so you have... You have four songs. One of them has a long guitar solo, Doreen, at the end. Then you get this instrumental. Then you don't get any other instrumentals for the rest of the album. And if I have a complaint about You Are What You Is, it's the sequencing. Don't think Frank did a good job on this. This should have been dropped like at the end of, I think, side two. Or maybe side one and side two should have been flipped, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but it's great. I think it's really cool. It's Frank at his most, like, obtuse guitar solo-wise. You know, it's very... Those 78 solos were some weird solos. Listen to Chicago 78, that opening solo there. It's just Frank has, he has some really weird ideas and he's he's trying to be as difficult as possible as a guitar player and forcing the rhythm section to respond to some difficult ideas. And this is just three and a half minutes of that. And it's, it's, it's really cool. It's really awesome. But yeah, 
That, that would be my number one. Easily, easily, I think, my number one on this, um, if I'm going to count it as a guitar solo. But yeah, that's what they look like in written form. Um, you'd have to go check the album out if you want to know what they were like in sound form. Um, but yeah, uh, that's what they are. And where would I rank this album if I had to rank it among the others? I would put it right there towards the back. Um, I'm trying to find my list on here. You can see it. I can't. Uh, it's at number 55. Again, as much as I like the um, the third movement from the Sinister Footwear, I, I don't know if it compares to... I have road tapes right above it because of that Chung is Revenge, which I think is just... I think the fact that he's had these people double in it and it's not simply the solo. Had it been simply the solo, like the actual version with Kali Ud on drums, it would probably be ranked... It would push this album higher up the list. Um, but as it is, I have it towards the back. I think every one of those things above it has like one solo that is just like... I would rank above it that lifts the album up, you know? A rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, a better solo lifts the entire album, or so they say. But yeah, those are my rambling thoughts on You Are What You Is guitar solos. Um, let me know your rambling thoughts on You Are What You Is guitar solos. Anything I messed up on? I don't think I missed a solo. Suicide Chomp only has a Danny Wally slide solo. That's the only other one that I think would have had one. The beginning of Heavenly Bank Account, depending on... I think depending on the source, whether it's the original LP or the CD, has the ending of the Dumb All Over guitar solo as part of the track, but I'm not going to count that as the guitar solo because it's part of Dumb All Over. So yeah, anyways, yeah, that's what I got. Um, subscribe, like, share, leave your comments. Tell me what you think about this album, these solos. You know all these things work. Thanks for watching and go listen to this album, not for the guitar solos, for the incredible compositions and the lyrics and the fun, like side three, side two. Side two, that's the one with the society pages. That's one of the greatest sides of music ever. I love that. That's fantastic. All right, I'm done. Thanks for watching. Peace. Talk to you later.